right, we get it. Enough already. <laughs> Enough. I, I agree with you more than I agree with them. <laughs> well, well, well. Look well. who's come crawling back. Yes. <laughs> Where yes. it all started. I know. It's pretty weird to be back. I do not like being in that guest room at all. Oh, really? <laughs> that was the one room where I worked here you were not allowed to go in, and I don't like being in it now. <laughs> it really feels like you I'm doing something wrong by being inside yeah. it. You never, you never snuck in to see a guest? No. No no, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> no. No, and we were, ne we were never allowed to really be in there because it had to be kept nice for the guest. Yeah. Yeah. And it never really occurred to me one day I might be that, and I still don't feel... So I, li I put my bag in there and then stood in the corridor for the rest <laughs> of the I don't want to be in there at all. Yeah, but this place brings back so many memories. You were here. You were in this building. We I was very the, much in this yeah, building. Yeah, I was, this was this was the reason I came to America, yep. uh, and the, I was here for eight years. Yeah, same. Yeah. Well, that's why. That's why I was so happy you came on because we people don't know by looking at us, but we actually have very similar yeah. backgrounds because yes. we both joined the show. I moved to America to do the show, just mm -hmm. like you. And when yes. I first joined the show. You know, the, the Daily Show alumni network is so strong. <laughs> yeah. I asked to meet up with yeah. Mr. Oliver. You came to the yeah, and I, I thought Mr. this. Mr. Oliver. And I, yeah. <laughs> and he was Mr. Oliver. I was like, there's no way this guy's gonna let me meet up with him. And you were like, no, come come before work. There's nothing, there nothing I like more than talking to people who have questions about how to make field pieces. Yeah. Because it's, the, or it's, the, it's such a narrow set of skills. Yes. And all, you had, all of your questions were great. I, that was, I remember you leaving and thinking, oh, you're going to be fine. Even though you don't have the answers yet, all your questions are right, so you're going to be fine. Oh, you do right. not have a problem. Oh, I, like I will say, before... Before we make it too sincere, you yeah. do have that unique skill set of not minding being a dick to people. Uh, and that <laughs> really... It, at the end, of, that is the secret sauce. <laughs> well, that, that's, that is the... I mean, you know, you have to really not care to do satire sometimes. And yes. everyone's like... People... I don't think people know how much you don't give a f Yes. <laughs> like, that's you truly right. don't give a f no, you, you, you will go hard. In the marrow of my bones, sometimes yeah. when our lawyers say they're going to be upset, you yeah. go, I'm not having a physical reaction to that at all. Yes. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, it is of no concern to me yeah. whether the Sackler family are mad with me or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I'm a little bit... There's a tingle of happiness. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that's kind of what you need to yes, do definitely, it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I, you yeah. like the feeling... That I, I like the feeling of trouble. I, yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. In comedy, it's good, because I'm, I'm probably a natural coward in many ways, but when it comes to comedy, I do like the feeling of being in real trouble. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. You talked about it. You said pushing the button. Yeah, you said exactly, you just yeah. a button, you just got to push yeah, it. Exactly. Because, I mean, I, you know, and, and what was interesting was when I went and met with you, this is how much you don't give a f You made me come to your office at 8 a.m., first of yes. all, which is... Yeah. Which is extremely early for comedians. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wake that up, is but... true. That <laughs> is it, that's the amazing thing about doing jobs like this. Now. Yeah. When you get into comedy, it's not generally thinking that you will see a human being's breakfast time. No. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. right. You came. You came very early. You looked yeah. bright and early. You showered. <laughs> I had I showered. no complaints. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I came and I, t I talked to you and I had very specific questions. And one thing you told me, I've been using this in my podcast rounds. I don't know if you've, if it's come back to you, but like. Um, uh, well, you told me it took you two years yeah. to relearn how to do comedy in America. I think that's probably true. You were yeah. spot on to the yeah. day, by the yeah. way. I was, in hindsight, I was like, oh my God. Because I remember there was a day I was in New York City gigging at some comedy club, and it, it was two years in, literally almost to the day. And I remember things just starting to click a little bit yeah. of like relearning how to do comedy. Because again, like you, like me, we were doing comedy outside of America yes. before we even came here. Yeah, and so I think the outsider perspective in comedy always works. The thing with being an immigrant here is you kind of have to learn the exact ways <laughs> that your outsider perspective can translate. Yeah. So you kind of have to learn, basically, how that can work. And once it does, you're fine. But until that point, it does feel a little bit like uncharted waters. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit like, um, you know, you can come here and you can joke about uh, America on a very surface level. And you can, you can, and that will do well for you for, you know, if you have a 15-minute set, maybe 30-minute set. Yeah. But I feel like after nine months or a year in America, the audience can kind of smell the bullshit of like, mm -hmm. Of like you've been here long enough. Yes. <laughs> right. Like guns that's shouldn't true. be weird yeah, to you. That's right. So so really, what when that, the 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 prof, how profound your two year thing was like it takes two years to learn the nuances of America so you can make fun of them in ways which yes exactly they appreciate exactly like don't tell us we have guns we yeah. know we have guns yes. tell us something else <laughs> we, yeah. we def if we know nothing else about ourselves is that yeah. we have guns to a genuinely problematic extent right. that is not a fresh insight. <laughs>
we genuinely know. Yeah, yes, so, exactly. So you were like going deeper, deeper, and deeper into it, which you know uh, that 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 was my guiding light as well when I first oh, God, started. I'm so here. glad yeah. my incredibly insightful advice of wait 24 months yeah. worked. <laughs> like a charm. I still can't believe it. I just deep down didn't want to hear from you again for two years. <laughs> like, that's all it was. Yeah. Come back. Come back with the same question in two yeah, years. Yeah. And then we'll talk. Yeah. You're spot on. And uh, I wonder, like, um, do you feel like... Uh, Satire in 2023 is that you know we you've been at the show you, you've seen the Daily Show kind of evolve over a lot of times and when you joined the show I don't there wasn't anyone else doing it kind of there wasn't TikTok there wasn't Instagram oh you know, no when, there wasn't those things right there, yeah. so so it wasn't a bunch of you know like f-ing assholes on, on talking about you know uh, like trying to do satire but f-ing it up all the time and and so <laughs> <laughs> what sorry no. <laughs> Now I'm just attacking a bunch of people on now, social media. I think you're now attacking the entire population of TikTok for yeah. trying. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, no, I'm down. I got, I'm hosting for one day. Come at me, TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I, I was distracted by... Can I, is that a monogram shirt? If you have a monogram shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very fancy shirt, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. This one is, um, uh, we, I got this shirt um, made in New York City, Chinatown. Wow. And he, <laughs> no, he's a girl. He's a legit tailor. And then he asked me if I wanted my Chinese name uh, embroidered on it. That's I was like, go for it. And then now it just looks nice. like a mustard stain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like a my son. It does at look all. a little yeah. bit like yeah. a mustard yeah. stain. So, it's a very stylish though. mustard stain. Yeah, yeah, did you guys get fancy suits when you No, did? we got no suits. We got I cannot we we were not given any i I'd never owned a Check suit. Check out this boomer. <laughs> Coming on the Daily Show, telling us how good we have it now. You really camera. Do. You, we didn't have a desk. We had to buy. We didn't have suit. cameras. We had to go. I had to go. I had to go to a, a place to buy a suit. And we're doing field pieces, you wreck them all the time. Mm. For years here, yeah. we did not. There's nothing that made ex correspondents more angry than hearing that we got free suits when we did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that was the thing that bothered them the most. It was, no, no, you should have to go into the hole every year just to get a, a presentable suit. Now, look at you. You're well, yeah. spiffy. No, they, they, did the show pay for that? Uh, yeah, the show... Oh, they, f- they, this somehow. <laughs> did, they pay, monograms? They, you get monogram shirts uh, now? Yeah. You know, Comedy we, Central has changed. I know things are a little choppy here, but yeah. monogram shirts? <laughs> no, I told them if they didn't monogram it, they were racist. And then they just did, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, Chinese, that's yeah, a move that I can't make. <laughs> Yeah, but like uh, that's the thing. Like we're both Im- immigrants in America, yeah. and um, do you ever? I guess my question to you is like, wh- wh- how do you answer the people who are like, if you don't like it here, leave. <laughs> Yeah. I get that a lot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess they took it's a, I mean, it's a horrible point, but it's a fair question. <laughs> I guess now my answer would be, I'm a citizen, you can't do that. But I think I, I, the tricky thing is I felt ownership. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's very dangerous. A British person saying, yeah. I felt ownership of yeah. this country. <laughs> historically, <laughs> historically does not go yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's the I just went to India and I felt like I belonged. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But I I felt at home here long before my legal status was solid. Mm. That's the tricky thing as an immigrant. The more I felt at home here, the more cognizant you are of the fact that it's not up to you whether or not you get to stay or not. So it was a massive relief to get my green card and an even bigger relief to get my citizenship. So, yeah, despite the fact immigrants tend to talk shit, it's generally the kind of way that you talk shit with someone you genuinely love. Sure. Also, as 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 a comedian, I only really talk shit as a way of expressing love. Professionally. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. really know how to express myself right. sincerely. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I like you. I'm never going to say that. Yeah. F*** you, yeah. Ronnie. Yeah. There you see. There you go. Yeah, F*** yeah. you yeah. in your show. Yeah. That's how we learn. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, but I was, I was back on that earlier point. Like, do you feel there's a place for satire? Like, basically, the... the the, the news is so crazy right now. Reality is sometimes matching up to the news sometimes. In that environment, do you feel that satire is still possible? Like, you know, when you're doing a joke ironically, do you feel like people can get it, that you're trying to ironically be the bad guy in some, you know? It, oh, I see. You mean, like, if you're doing Philpy? Because we used to yeah. play the bad guy in Philpies, yes. right? You would say things you did not mean just to embody an argument that you do not agree with. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, in field pieces, that's the way that we would operate all the time. Uh, in general, um, I mean, our, our show's a little different. Like, mm-hmm. it, we're, we're not in the... Yeah, I'm not asking about your show. I'm asking about, for me, <laughs> for this show. We get it, we don't f- 
Can you figure it out? I'm talking, about I'm talking about for me. Like I, think, when I... I think there's. I think there'll always be a place for satire. I mean, there was a place for it in in Germany in the 30s. It didn't seem to work out that well over there, but <laughs> they gave it a go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so no, I think I think there will always be. And I, unlike you, am happy for people online to try and do it as well. Ronnie no, really would I'm... like nobody to have a voice. Nobody. <laughs> no. All about earn your voice, like me. I did. I had to. And get on the show to get a voice. You don't get a voice just because you're in your underwear That's on right. Instagram. Ron, I don't... Ron, Ron, Ronnie regrets that gatekeepers have been removed from the yeah. process. Yeah. You really like the gates. I love the gatekeepers. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. It was so tough to come here. I, yeah. You know, it was really tough for me to come here. I, I like you, I also really wanted to come here. I will, that, that is the thing. I, do, I don't think Americans understand how rough the yes. U.S. immigration process yes. is. When they say, come to people, come in the right way, I don't think they realize how literally impossible that is <laughs> in, some, uh, in some aspects. Yeah. When, when I got my green card here, uh, they brought it to me in my office upstairs, and uh, they gave me a Budweiser and an apple pie with a little American flag in it. <laughs> and I think they would give me it as if, like, here's a joke, right? Yeah. Oh, you got it. You were always going to get it. Here it is. And I nearly cried. And <laughs> to, uh, for a British person, nearly crying is crying. Yeah. <laughs> That's as close as I can come. But I was so relieved because yeah. I was worried about it so much. Yeah. And so I think you, t you tend to find, like, when we were yeah. talking before, exactly, when when you find out someone just got their green card, you can kind of almost feel the relief yeah. coming off it because yeah. it's such a concern. It's not easy. It's not no, easy. No, it is not easy. In fact, even don't even talk hard. about the green card. Even the visa before the green card. It's incredibly it's hard. Called, it's called the Extraordinary Ability Visa. Yes. You, yeah. you have to prove, yeah. first of all, that you have extraordinary ability, which I challenge anyone to do. <laughs> Unless it's you're so freaking an NBA player, seven foot, and then second of all, it's like if you don't constantly prove that you're, they can deport you. Yeah. Like if I have a bag segment on the Daily Show, I'm. That's right. Going, yeah. You did not demonstrate extraordinary yeah. ability. That was at median level yeah. ability. That is the worst thing about coming in on a visa is like occasionally they'll look at the visa and say, "What do you do?" Yeah. Because they're expecting a surgeon. Yeah. So <laughs> someone with a marketable skill. And the moment you say comedian, they're like that's this is not for you. Yeah. That's it's not. And, and also, then, if it's all go, tell me something funny, like, or what? Is this a fun bit? Uh, yeah. Or is this the moment I get deported? Uh, yeah, yeah. Do I need a joke on hand? To it demonstrates extraordinary ability yeah. in terms of wordcraft. Yeah. Yes, it's incredibly stressful so, in a way people don't understand. Yeah, so in a weird way, I'm with you in that, in that, like, in, um, immigrants to America who come here actually want to be here and have fought to be here and we're the ones who get shit done here. Yes. Because we had to f***ing prove it every I single would, time. That's right. I I would say immigrants. Get it done immigrants. Done. That's right. We get the job done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would say what is more quintessentially American than coming to a country you don't belong in and deciding you're going to stay? Yeah. <laughs> and at Thanksgiving of all times. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, uh, we get it. You, you know, you. Every interview I've researched you on, you've you profess your love for America. You're yeah. still here. Clearly, you still love it. Yeah. Okay. So can you shut the f up and be American for one minute instead of constantly complaining and talking like a fucking foreigner all the time? I mean, I, 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 I challenge you. You, how, be, you challenge me to be American. Yes. And I want how, you to prove, how would one I do that? I want you to eat this hot dog right now. Oh boy. And then I want you to throw <laughs> this football. And first of all, you have to call it a football. Okay. I you can't call, do that. Yeah, you gotta, I call it an American football. Okay. American. I'll call it an American and you football. You gotta throw this to me. So you gotta eat that first and you throw this to me. Okay. All right? Like right. like this. No, no. You gotta freaking oh, okay. throw a tight no, spiral. No, no, We're gonna go no, over there. Okay. All right. So eat this first. We got this from a bodega. So you might. Oh no. This is the way we. USA! 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 All right. And then you got to come over here. And you got to stand right here. Okay. All right. And you got to throw a tight spiral. <laughs> How hard can that be? All right. Hang on. Ready? Hang on. All right. Can we get a drum roll? Drum roll. For you? For you? Ready? Yeah. Okay. Prove it. All right, we got, yeah, we got. This is last week tonight with John Oliver. And wherever you'll find it, who gives a f